to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ jesus said but i say to you whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed fornication in his heart. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 28. Welcome to our study of the truth about pornography. Pornography is indeed a very serious problem that we have to face today. With the advent of the internet and all the media tools that are out there, one can very easily access pornography. And so today we're going to consider what does God's Word have to say about the Christian and the viewing of pornography. As always, we're so glad that you've joined us today for our broadcast. We encourage you, visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. We have a lot of Bible study material available free of charge. All our video and audio and transcripts are available online, as well as study guides and and other courses that you can take. And so please stop by our website and visit that material, look at that material, and see if it wouldn't help you in your Bible study. And again, we encourage you to visit the Lord's Church in your area. Maybe you've never been to the Church of Christ. Friend, I assure you, you'll find friendly, kind people there who love the Lord and His truth. And so please stop by the Lord's Church in your area and get to know them better. Maybe you'd like to have a Bible study. They'd be glad to have a Bible study with you on whatever subject you'd like to discuss. As we think today about the subject of pornography, indeed what a very serious and heinous sexual problem this is. Pornography is indeed a serious problem today. Let me illustrate. A host of marriages every year are broken up because of pornography. One spouse or the other may get involved with someone online, may go to looking at pictures online, and because of that, their interest wanes for their partner and problems begin to arise. Every year, marriages are broken up because of pornography. Pornography is a serious problem because if your home is like most in the United States of America where internet or TV comes into it, pornography infiltrates and has the ability to destroy the moral fiber of the home. It's hard to watch television without some form of pornography being shown. And if you open up the computer, and even if you're just casually maybe looking at one's email or, or things that are very good in and of themselves, you have to be careful because pornography can pop up and you may not even want it to. And then thirdly, pornography is even becoming a problem for churches and their computers and the many things that go along with that, whether it be universities, whether it be churches, places of higher learning, have to spend thousands of dollars to protect their computers from getting caught up in the porn industry. And so as we think about pornography, this is indeed a very serious problem that we must address. But first we want to let this be defined from Scripture. The Greek word, for pornography is the word pornea. Pornea literally means, Matthew chapter 19, verse 9, fornication or adultery, and it means illicit sexual activity. Now, when we say illicit, that's something that is not licensed or allowed. What type of sexual activity does God condone? Well, only one. Hebrews 13, 4. Marriage is honorable. The bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And so pornography, the idea of illicit sexual activity, is any type that occurs outside of the marriage relationship. Now, when we deal with pornography, we are dealing more with sins of the mind, of viewing materials or seeing materials, or maybe some type of over-the-phone activity there. And thus, pornography is a combination of two Greek words. It's the word pornea, 
for illicit sexual activity and it is the word graphos which means to write and so it is the writing printing or making of movies related to illicit or unauthorized sexual activity are there different types of pornography today well sure there are there are different variations of it there's what we think of as maybe hard porn where you've got triple x videos where you've got porn websites on the internet magazines like hustler or playboy that would be more of a a hard type of porn where it's just out there blatant in your face and then there's what we might think of as maybe something that's a little softer, not softer in the sense that it's not wrong, but not viewed the same by society. For example, Abercrombie and Fitch catalog, which is fraught full of pornography, the viewing of illicit activity or things of that nature, the human body, that catalog is full of illicit pictures. Uh, maybe even a Walmart flyer with women in their underclothes or, or romance novels or television and its commercials where one can view or read or their imagination is prompted to look in that way. Now friend, don't get me wrong. When we talk about pornography, this is a money-generated industry. I suspect you'll be surprised how much money pornography actually generates as an industry. For example, the revenue from pornography. Did you know the revenue from pornography is larger than the combined revenues of all professional football, baseball, and basketball franchises combined? It exceeds the combined revenue of ABC, CBS, and NBC. Sadly, child pornography generates $3 billion annually, and the whole industry generates $12 billion annually. It is indeed a money-making industry. Nearly 900 theaters in the United States of America show pornographic films, and there are more than 15,000 adult bookstores and video stores that offer pornographic material. Now, how does that relate to something that I can understand? Here's how. Adult bookstores outnumber McDonald's in the United States of America by a margin of three to one. Is it a money-making industry? You bet it is. Is it a serious problem that we have to face today? Absolutely. For every child of God, it indeed is. And friend, this is something we need to be concerned about because pornography is shown to deteriorate and to cause problems with morality in so many various areas. For example, let me show the association between pornography and take, for example, some heinous sexual sins such as rape. Michigan State Police Detective Daryl Pope found that of the 38,000 sexual assault cases in Michigan between 1956 and 1979, in 41% of those cases, pornographic material was viewed just prior to or during the crime. What was it that maybe led, surely they had problems in their mind already, but what was it that led them to want to act that out? Seeing it, viewing it, and wanting that, and taking what was on the page and trying to make it reality, often led to those problems. Sherry Height found that 67% of males who admitted that they had wanted to rape a woman reported reading pornographic magazines. Sociologist Murray Strauss and Larry Barron of the University of New Hampshire found that rape rates are highest in states which have sales of sex magazines and lax enforcement of pornography laws. Do you see the correlation there? 86% of convictus rapists admit to regular use of porn and 75% of rapists admit to simulating acts they viewed in pornography. Is pornography something that's good for the moral fiber of our society? Absolutely not. Did you know that pornography is actually linked to other violent crimes as well? Uh, let me illustrate. As you think about pornography and other violent crime, think about this. 81% of recent mass murderers admit to using pornography extensively. They had a, a mind that was devoid of truth. 
They were filling that with ungodly things, including pornography. The crime rate increases two to seven times wherever pornography is sold. Now, friend, you just think about that. You bring in an adult bookstore, you bring in a pornographic theater, what's going to happen to crime rate? You've got people going over there, viewing that, and being attracted to that that you don't want in your community. Dr. James Dobson actually interviewed Ted Bundy. And one of the nations, he's one of the nations, as you well know, most notorious serial killers. On the day before his execution, Ted Bundy said that the most damaging kinds of pornography are those that involve violence and sexual violence because the wedding of those two forces, he said, as I know only too well, bring about behavior that is just, just too terrible to describe. When you've got violence and, and pornography and sexual ideas involved, and in many of those you do, friend, you're going to have problems like Mr. Bundy himself had. Why should a Christian abstain from pornography? Not only does it deteriorate one's morality, it pollutes the mind. Think again about the words of Jesus. Jesus said in Matthew 5, verse 28, whoever looks at a woman to lust after her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. It makes my mind unholy. You see, I am to let holiness strive to live in my life. Without holiness, no one can see God. Hebrews 12, verse 14. Be holy as he who called you is holy. And yet, when one is putting in pornography, viewing pornography, watching it, reading about it, our mind is not what it ought to be. Now, here's why that's so significant. Do you remember Proverbs 23, verse 7? The Bible says, As a man thinks in his heart, what? So is he. My mind, my heart. That becomes what I live and what I act out and what I think about. And so if I'm putting ungodly things in my mind, it's going to pollute and degrade one's mind. Pornography has the ability to lead to lying and dishonesty. Revelation 21.8, the Bible says all liars will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. What about those who look at pornography? Is that something they'd like to put on the front page of the paper? Is that something they'd like to put on an application? Or is it something they would lie and deceive about and try to not let others know about? You see, it leads to lying and dishonesty and other things. It's directly related to secrecy and things done in shame and darkness. John 3 verse 19, that is of the devil, that's of sin, and that is not something that a Christian ought to be involved in. And so once you begin to look at pornography, that affects your mind in a very evil and dark way. Friend, let's also realize that pornography, as we mentioned, has the ability to destroy and break down marriages. At the 2003 meeting of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers, two-thirds of the 350 divorce lawyers who attended said the Internet played a significant role in divorces in the past year. I can think of people, you can think of people, who maybe one spouse got to doing something on the Internet, looking at something, talking to somebody, viewing pictures of someone, and before you know it, the marriage is busted up. Pornography has the ability to destroy marriages and homes. Let me give you another example. A study done by Dolph Zillman of the University of Indiana and Jennings Bryant of the University of Houston revealed that repeat exposure to pornography results in a decreased satisfaction with one's sexual partner, with the partner's sexuality, and with the partner's sexual curiosity. There was a decrease in the valuation of faithfulness and a major increase in the importance of sex without attachment. Well, what did all that study show? Nothing amazing. It's just that once you begin to look at that, you're less satisfied with your partner and more satisfied with just sex for sex's sake. And so we need to realize that does great harm to the home. The Bible teaches that married couples should be satisfied with one another. Listen to Proverbs chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. 
The Bible says, as a loving deer and a graceful doe, let her breast satisfy you at all times. Always be enraptured with her love, for why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman and be embraced in the arms of a seductress? Look at this language. God created marriage to be holy and right and for two married people to be satisfied with one another, to be enraptured with one another, to have that relationship. And yet pornography is destined to break it down. Hebrews 13, 4 again says, Marriage is honorable, the bed undefiled, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Pornography has the ability to destroy marriages because it creates a lack of trust. I'm to love my spouse. I'm to love her as myself. I'm to put her thoughts and ideas, her ways above my ways in some way. I'm to look out for her interests, not just my own. Ephesians 5, verses 22 through 31. But when somebody begins to have pornographic material being viewed, when they find out that happens, let's say one spouse finds out that the other's been looking at pornography. How's that going to affect the marriage? Well, you're definitely going to have problems with trust. You're going to be thinking to yourself, if it's pornography now, what's it going to be later? If they're looking at these images and thinking these thoughts, what if the opportunity arose where they could fulfill those? And so it is a very serious problem that creates trust issues in the marriage, and it does cause one to stray mentally. Anyone who looks at a woman to lust after her, Jesus said, has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Is Jesus saying that's grounds for divorce? That's not even the idea. No more than hating your brother is actually murder, but you've departed where it counts. In your mind and in your heart, you've already began to stray. Now friends, as we think about the problems of pornography, I hope you'll listen real carefully to this next part. Pornography is a terrible, terrible threat to our children. 82% of child molesters admit to imitating the sexual behavior they've seen in pornographic material. 82% of child molesters admit to seeing what they saw happen in pornographic material. Do you see the connection there? Not only that, of the 1,400 child sexual molestation cases in Louisville, Kentucky, between July 80 and July 1984, adult pornography was connected with each incident and child pornography with the majority of them. The average age of first exposure to Internet porn now is anywhere between 9 and 11 years old. Friend, if you don't think your children aren't being threatened by pornography, you need to wake up. It is a very serious problem. If you've got a tablet, if you've got an iPad, if your child has a, a phone that can access the Internet, if you've got access to the Internet, period, your children are indeed threatened by pornography. In fact, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children revealed in a June 2005 study that 40% of arrested child molesters, child pornography possessors, had both victimized children and were in possession of child pornography. Again, just showing a correlation between the two. And so we must realize this is indeed a very serious problem that every child of God has to deal with. And so let's realize our children are at threat. Our children are being taken advantage by this industry and we must not let that happen to them. Now, let me show you what the Bible says about it. We need to realize that children ought to be able to keep their innocence. Matthew 18 and Matthew 19, 14, Jesus said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Children ought to be viewed as, as innocent and pure and ought to be able to enjoy that life without having these kind of threats up against them. As we think about threats to our children, let's realize that pornography has the tendency to lead to sexual promiscuity later. 2 Timothy 2 verse 22, flee youthful lust, 
1 Peter 2, verse 11, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul. When a young person begins to view that action on internet or in a book, it, it makes them want to act that out and it can lead to, if the opportunity arises, them to fulfill that later in life. And of course, there are many other mental health and psychological disorders that are associated with this. Why else should a Christian abstain from pornography? Friend, we need to realize that pornography has the ability to erode one's self-control. Listen to 1 Corinthians 6, 12. Paul said, I will not be brought under the power of any. What's Paul getting at? He's not going to let anything rule his life except Christ, and yet one who is addicted, and friend, listen very well, it is an addiction. I've known people, you've known people who were addicted to viewing pornography. It has the ability to erode our self-control. If I've got to do immoral, ungodly things to go view those things or to bring that into my mind, I don't have the self-control I ought to have. Here's what the Bible says we ought to do. Bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Can someone who's viewing pornography really fulfill that verse? Is every thought under the obedience of Christ? Romans 13, 14, the Bible says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. 1 Peter 2 verse 11. The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Galatians 5, verses 22 through 24. Friend, we also mentioned that pornography is indeed a violation of God's law because it violates God's purity principle. Now, what are we talking about? Matthew 5, verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart. Can you look at and view pornography and think about those actions in your mind and really be pure in heart. 1 Timothy 5 verse 22, the Bible says, keep yourself pure. Are you really keeping yourself pure if you're involved in pornography? Psalm 24 verses 3 and 4 ask this question. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in His holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Are we really living pure lives, right lives, lives that are, are honorable in the sight of God, if we're taking those images and thoughts into our mind and, and our imagination runs wild with them? Surely not. Now friend, we also want to offer some things that parents and individuals can do in, in preventing, a preventative measure in preventing a pornography problem. What do you do to prevent a problem with pornography? First of all, don't open Pandora's box, even one time. Don't go there. Don't think about it. Turn your mind away from it. If the opportunity exists, resist it. Just don't go there. Secondly, you've got to realize this is sinful action that has the ability to cost me my soul. If Jesus said, you've already committed adultery in your heart, and a, adultery in the heart would be contrary to the will of God, I've got to realize pornography is a sin. It is a violation of God's law. It is something that will send me to hell if I don't change my ways, and I must realize the serious nature of that. Friend, we offer this advice, and it is counter to most you will hear today, but we would suggest not watching most TV that exists today. Most of our TV that is on today. We're talking about major network shows and programs and movies. Most of it is going to contain material that will not help one's mind to be pure and holy and right. Are we saying everything in that area is wrong? It's not what we're saying. But you know exactly what we're talking about on the sitcoms and television shows and, and movies and just imagine the, the, the daytime soap opera shows, how immoral and ungodly they are. Can a Christian look at that without thinking about some of the immoral, ungodly things that he ought not to think about? 
According to Sex on TV4, a Kaiser Family Foundation, did you know that the number of television sexual scenes has almost doubled since 1998? 70% of all shows have some sexual content, averaging five sexual scenes per hour compared to 56% and three scenes per hour in 1998. And surely it's only gotten worse even more recently. And so I'm going to be bombarded with it the more I watch TV. Well, as we then think about preventing a pornography problem, what about dealing with a problem? Let's say somebody does view porn. Friend, you've got to come to terms with it and realize, I do have a problem. You need to pray about that problem. James 5 verse 16. You need to learn to put your mind to thinking about good and holy and upright things. The Bible teaches that Christians are to deny the flesh and its lust. And really, we've got to seek help and accountability from those closest to us. But we also want to mention this. Parents, listen carefully. If you have internet, a pornography filter is a must. Having a computer without a pornography filter is dangerous in the home. And those filters are, are free of charge. You can go on the internet and you can find porn blocking filters that will block that in real time that you can download onto your computer that just won't allow sites to come up. If it has ratings that are immoral, if it views that or has viewed that and they search the web and see, you can put those on your computer and make sure that your children are indeed protected from those things. And so as Christians, let's realize this is immoral. This is ungodly. Pornography is not just something that's a part of our culture. It's contrary to this book. It's contrary to holy living. It's contrary to purity of mind. And it's contrary to God's sanctity of marriage. Maybe you've been involved in a pornography problem and maybe that's affected your life. Friend, it's never too late to make that right. If you're a child of God, you must but repent of that and ask for forgiveness and pray to God. If you're not a Christian, why not become one? Hear the word, believe in Jesus, repent of your sins, and be immersed in water, and then put good things in your mind so that you can glorify and honor God all the days of your life. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is taking the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we do and say. And unlike many other religious groups, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. And to God be the we encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form, or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll-free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111.